Hey, Fab. Hey. Oh, he, he <laughs> I got really excited. <laughs> All right. I like when you get really excited. Um, I'm doing great. You? Good. So Fab and I were just talking offline before, and we want to do some series. Um, we want to do a, a series. Uh, we're going to go much more in depth on how to set up your CRM. Um, and before you go there, Fab, and I, I kind of know you're going to agree with me, but we'll talk about it anyways, is that I think a lot of people, and, and you know, Fab and I talk about this a lot. A lot of people have a CRM uh, and they just don't know how to use it. It's mm -hmm. sort of like having a bunch of fancy features in a software and you're just not using them. So a lot of people take it as a glorified uh, notebook. And this is interesting because mm -hmm. it really touches both Fab's world and my world individually. Yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah, and, to, and to add to that, I mean, I was just uh, browsing around on, on Twitter the other day and I noticed somebody asking like, oh, what are some good CRMs for small, very small businesses? And some guy was like, oh, man, most cases, like I just get my clients to go hop onto an Excel. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> that's brutal. And I think you're right. I think you're I think a lot of organizations, when it comes to their software, they just they're stuck. They're either like afraid to hop on and they use like these Excel style things or they buy like a sales force and it has all these bells and whistles that are never used and the system is half used. And they kind of forget that your your software in our case, in this case, the CRM is really there to help you, like help you make more money, like help you grow your business. It's not like a must have, well, I guess we need a CRM. So we'll hive one and that's it. Yeah, and I think the and and you know I know you agree with me because we've talked about this before. But if you don't have a proper sales process that is personalized to what you're doing, the CRM will be clunky um, mm -hmm. because the CRM needs to follow your sales process to be a really useful tool to your salespeople. You know, mm -hmm. so quickly, you know, if your sales process is you know if you're selling widgets and your sales process is make a phone call have a conversation with the person, call them back two weeks later, whatever it might be, making up some crazy sales process. Well, if that lives in your CRM, then the people follow it and it makes sense. Whereas mm -hmm. what some people do is say, okay, I'm going to use the CRM, their sales process, and they're like, well, this is different. They end up taking notes and it's not clear. The semantics, the language is not common with each salesperson. Uh, they still use some of their old tools. I've said this before, but in a, a company, a prior company of mine, we had... We had Salesforce, mm -hmm. which we were supposed to use, and we had the old system of Excel sheets, like you just said, Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. And we had to do those in parallel for a year. Well, how do you think salespeople feel about that? Oh, so you're yeah. asking me to do double the work for absolutely no reason to me. You mm -hmm. know, so uh, you need to be organized and you need to understand the practicality of the CRM. You need to sit down and dig deep down. The CRM is not just this shiny software. It's very useful, but if you don't adapt it to your sales process, to your reality, then it just becomes a hindrance. Like, you know, but I think more and more, correct me if I'm wrong, Fab, but more and more people are learning to use um, CRMs in a better fashion. I look on your face, looks like you don't agree, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're obviously more uh, in touch with salespeople than I am. Uh, so I'll, I'll trust you on that. I mean, I still think there's a lot of learning because I think, and I, I think you, you pinpointed the, 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 the key here, which is your sales process. And I think ultimately a lot of sales organizations don't have a defined sales process. Um, they, they, you know, it's the sales process is usually like the sales leader. Well, this is how I do sales. So they kind of mimic a sales process. And then every salesperson has their own sales process. And I mean, they have some general idea that you do a demo here and a demo there and, and stuff like that. But, and, and so then it's impossible when it comes to even like the Salesforce or the HubSpot CRM implementation, you don't know what to implement because you speak to the sales leader, this is a sales process. And then, you speak to some sales folks and they're like, yeah, I, I know Tim, like sales VP wants us to do it this way, but I do it that way. And then you're like, well, clearly, you know, from the get go that your implementation implementation isn't going to work uh, just because there is no defined sales process. And so it's impossible to become a tool that'll help somebody if, if you can't customize it to your needs. 
Mm-hmm. And if everyone has a different sales process. And that's where, you know, I used to work with a company, won't mention their name, but the brilliance of what they did, and I think any good sales consulting firm does, is that they either create a sales process for a company, but sure. from what the people are doing. So they go and take the best practices and fit it into what we'll call today a, cons- a consultative sales process, which helps you get there. So if you yeah. get the buy-in from everyone that, hey, if you do your sales process like this, you'll do well. Yes, yes. So now let's mechanize it or let's mm. automate it and put it in the CRM that will remind you of all the great things that you need to do. Then they're like, yes, yes, yes. It's going to remind me to do things. It's going to help me sell. I like this tool because that's what a CRM does, right? It's a mm-hmm. reminder of all the great things you need to do to get you down your sales process. That's all it does. And it, it accumulates data. It takes the data and puts it in categories that are ma- that make sense to you. It helps you create your yeah. sales funnel. It helps you know your close ratio. It helps you know your, your, your cold call ratio. All of these things to help you get to where you need to go. But mm-hmm. you're, I totally agree with you. Sales process first. And understanding or, or or formulating the sales process from the best practices of your team but also linking it to a really good consultative sales process if you're if you're you know most b2b businesses you know if you really are selling a commodity then there's some consultative sales but it's really you know if it's all about price well then you might have a different sales process but that needs mm-hmm. to be in there as well actually i have a client I want to talk about this. I have a client <laughs> who's very one call close commodity. Nice. And you know, when we try to get consultative, it's, it's like it, 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 it's very thin consultative. It's more relationship building and, and making the, the, the potential client realize what the upside are, but it has a different approach than, than typical consultative sales. So their sales process and their CRM is very different than most of my other clients who are, in a more of a traditional B2B consultative sales process. Right. So, um, but all this boils down to, if you just go out there and buy a CRM, it's like buying a car, not knowing how to drive, you know, it looks good in the driveway and, and you're turning on the flasher and listening to the radio, but you're never driving the car anywhere. Well, <laughs> it's not really helping you. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, yeah. And, and I think ultimately, obviously like I, all, I'm more on the marketing side of things clearly, but you know, and I think, because I think like a bad CRM implementation has more impact than than a lot of leaders, sales, uh, business leaders might expect. So they're like, initially it's seen, oh, this is a sales tool, right? So sales does it. So then I've seen a few things happen. I have so to one, interrupt here because there's yeah. a question I want to ask you. And this is it's what I know where you're going and I love this, okay? Because as a salesperson, <laughs> you just see the CRM as a tool of recognizing data, but what you're going to tell me, and if I'm thinking of, of HubSpot or anyone else, is it's also a follow-up tool and it's also a sales marketing tool, which a lot of people don't realize. So tell us a little bit about that right now. Like a good CRM that is properly used from your perspective, what does it do for marketing? Well, that's it. And and so marketing, you know, like there's a lot of what I'll call the golden rules of marketing, but you know, one of them is that you have to personalize a lot of your in, offen, uh, offensive, <laughs> so good. A, lot, a lot of your initiatives, right? And so if, if my database is all a mess, I don't know who sales actually is talking to. I don't know where they're at in their sales process. I don't know, am I allowed to reach out to them? I am not allowed to, then it really hinders marketers in terms of being able to help the business generate revenue, right? Because if I can't nurture my leads, because I don't know which ones are leads and which ones are contacts, like in a Salesforce. But let's slow reference. down a second, because right now you and I understand that, you know, your CRM is going to help you nurture the leads. But let's say for the, the, the person who's jumping on our podcast for the first time and they don't, they're saying, hey, wait, hold on. I thought a CRM was just to take notes to understand where I'm going. How is it connected to the lead generation? Can you just explain that connection, Fab? Just explain that link of what, how the CRM is also going to help you with lead generation? Well, because if or you think nurturing, about it, sorry. yeah, so if you think about it, right, like a, a sale, like how, how you close business, right? You, there's usually two sources of leads. There's anything that's sales generated, you know, your prospecting, your referrals, your stuff like that, that, that lives in the CRM. But there's also all your marketing initiatives, right? So all the webinars you're creating, the social stuff you're doing, 
the blog posts you're creating, the podcasts you're doing, all of that ends up generating leads. And so they need to, they need to be able to port it into the CRM so that salespeople are starting to be able to identify, oh, I got a new hot lead from, from marketing and stuff like that. So if your two systems are separated and if the two systems are a mess, the salesperson is not going to know. And then all of a sudden I'm going to be like, Hey, Paul, why didn't you reach out to, to Melissa? Like she's hot. Like she's been downloading our stuff. She's active to speak to sales. Like, Oh, well, I never even saw Melissa because she's like in my, my CRM is such a mess that it's all over the place. And that's, that's one way. And then the other way, which I know we haven't talked a lot about before um, is marketing and maybe more product marketing can help salespeople where, you know, like, let's say, you know, your lead goes from stage one to stage two to stage three, but then fails to go to stage four. You know, like if you have a well-oiled CRM, um, you're able to then send that lead back to marketing, but marketing will do a different type of marketing with it because it knows that that lead has already gone through the first three stages of the sales process. But if you don't know that and you're somehow flagging it as not as dead, well, marketing doesn't know what to do with it. Why is it dead? Is it dead because it ignored you? Is it dead because it told you no? Is it dead because does it go with, you know what I mean? So the more this thing can be up to date, the more it helps the business generate revenue. Mm -hmm. And ultimately even the salesperson get more commission, right? Because yep. if I can reactivate a lead that was quote unquote dead, well, that's more commission for me at the end of the day. Yep. Yeah. Well, th that's great. Great explanation, Fab. I mean, it's good. Yeah. So, I think, you know, let's leave it at here for today because I think we've explained the beauty of a CRM uh, from a very traditional sales perspective and also in a, a nurturing perspective. And I, I really like your idea in, in future sessions, maybe we'll go a little bit more into the stages and like you said, where you plug in the nurturing and if you do it properly, how it becomes a real tool that is much more than just a note-taking device for a salesperson or um, what people used to think originally 10 years ago about CRMs, which is, you know, the way Big Brother uh, looks over you. It really becomes a tool to help you in your business. Yeah, and I'd like to do, and we'll see, we'll, we'll have to plan that session a little bit more, but I'd like to even do maybe a screen share, like this is how, yep. you know, we set up, let's say, well, I mean, obviously I have access to HubSpot, so this is how we set up a sales process within HubSpot and see and we can talk about each stages and stuff like that. I think that would be really yeah. interesting. Add a lot of value to that. Absolutely. So uh, great. So thanks everyone. Thanks for uh, being with us and stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more of where this came from. Thank you, Paul. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Fab. Bye-bye.